Hi everyone, in this video we are going to make a very simple beginner tailwind project. So this is the page that we are going to make. This has a navigation section at the top and uh, these are the links. When you hover over it, you get this underline. So this nav is fixed. When you scroll down, it remains on the page. Then we have this large hero section with some content and some uh, button. The background image is fixed. So if you scroll, you see the image does not move. Then we have this about us section. And then this showcase area, which shows all the products that we have. Then we have this newsletter section. Then this testimony section. And finally, we have the footer. So this page is responsive, completely responsive. If I shrink down the page, you can see the navigation turns into this mobile menu. If I click on this, we get the links. When you click on any links, the page refreshes. So this is the mobile version of the page. See all the elements are neatly stacked. So this is done using Tailwind. So let's start. So here I've opened a VS code and open up a folder called Tailwind project. This is an empty folder. In here, we are going to install Tailwind. So the first thing that we are going to do is to create a package.json file. So I'll write npm init dash y. So this is a y flag which will answer all the question to yes. For this, you have to install Node.js. You can easily install it by visiting their website. When you press enter, all the questions will be answered yes and a package.json file will be created. In here, we'll add our dependencies. Now let's go to the official website of tailwind.css. Here, click on this doc section. So we have different ways to install Tailwind. You can also use a CDN version just for playing around with the code. But for this project, we are going to use this Tailwind CLI. So the first thing that we are going to run is this Tailwind, is this npm installed dash d for dev dependencies and tailwind.css. So paste this command here. Now Tailwind will get installed. Now, as you can see, a node module folder has been created and in here, we have this Tailwind CSS. Now next we are going to make the config file, this tailwind.config file using this command and paste Tailwind CSS in it. Paste this command. This Tailwind config.js file will be created in which we'll have our configuration. The third step is to work on this Tailwind config file. Click on this. Now just copy this and paste it here. So basically what this is saying is that look for HTML and any HTML and JS file inside the source folder which can contain multiple directories. This file card character represent multiple directories, multiple level of directories. Now let's go to step three. In step three, they are asking us to create a input.css file inside the source folder. So we are going to create a folder called SRC. Inside this, we are going to create a file called input.css. And in this file, we are going to paste these directives. After this, what we are going to do is to create a folder called public. This will have all the index.html file, JavaScript file, and the compiled CSS file. So this is the distribution folder that we are going to use public. You can also give it a name called dist, or as here, they are giving it the name. They are keeping the output.css file in the same SRC folder, but we are separating it. Now we have this public folder. Now we are going to run this command. Paste it here, but we need to change this. Since we need the output to be in public folder and the name of the output will be styles.css, style.css. So this will be the output. Let's run this. Now inside this public folder, we have this style.css. This is generated by Tailwind CSS. This style of CSS, we are going to add link to our index.html file. See, we have this two warning because we don't have any index.html file here. This will go away. Next, I'm going to create a file called index.html in which we'll write all the markup. In here, let's add the basic structure. Let's say simple website. Now I'm going to link the style sheet that is generated by Tailwind CSS, this style sheet. So style.css. So this much we need to do. Now I can use Tailwind classes. So let's say h1 
क्लास लेट से हेलो वर्ल्ड आई एम गोइंग टू इंक्रीज द फोन साइज सो टेक्स्ट सी वी हैव दिस सजेशंस दिस इज बाय दैट इंटेलिजेंस टेलविन इंटेलिजेंस प्लग इन दैट वी हैव इंस्टॉल्ड टेक्स्ट एक्सेल बैकग्राउंड कलर रेड दिस आर द वेरिएंट ऑफ द रेड कलर नाउ टू रन दिस पेज आई कैन राइट क्लिक एंड ओपन दिस विद लाइव सर्वर so right now this is not working the reason is in the tailbit.config file we are providing a wrong location so html js file are inside the public folder i am going to remove this now if i see the classes are being applied so this is the installation process so now let's start working on the website so let me first remove this this we have added just for testing purpose now the first thing that i'm going to create is this nav bar so inside the body tag we are going to create the navigation section so i'll create a nav tag inside the nav tag i'm going to have a div which will act as a wrapper or you can call it as a container now inside this div we'll have three section one for the logo one for the links menu links and one for the hamburger icon now let's add the content So let me first add the logo. So the logo is an anchor tag, and in here I'm going to use box icons. So the way I'm going to add box icon is through this npm command. So I'm going to stop the watch, press Control Z. Now in here, write npm install box icon. Let me check. so we have this command npm install box icon hyphen save box icon hyphen save so this is going to install box icon after this gets completed the box icon are inside this node module folder so here you can see we have this box icon so now i'm going to add the box icon to a page so i'll use link we are going to move a folder up so dot dot forward slash the node module we have box icon and inside this box icon we have the css folder and inside the css folder we have this min dot css this box icon dot min dot css this we need to add now inside this a tag we are going to use the box icon so i bx bxs hyphen home hyphen smile so this is icon so see we have this and in here i'll write next we are going to work on the menu so this is the div that we are going to work on inside this i'm just going to have a simple a tag for the links this will be home now duplicate this three times this will be about this will be services and this will be contact let me add one more for testimony so these are the links now i am going to add the hamburger icon for that i am going to create a button so for this button i am going to give it a id menu button now inside this button i am just going to use a box icon so i with the class bx bx menu and also class px md this will increase the size of the icon i have done a mistake here so we have the icon we have different classes to increase or decrease the size like sm for small screen for small version lg for large version so we are going to use md so these code you can get from the box icon website let's say you click on this icon click on this font you get this code this is what i'm writing here now our content for the navigation is done now let's add tailwind classes to it so first what i'm going to do is to give a slight background color to a body element so i'll write class and bg i'm going to use this slate 100 so now we have this light gray color applied to a body next i'm going to work on this nav So I'll give it a class. First, I'm going to give it a background of zinc, 800. So 
so we have this background next i'm going to give it a padding all around padding 4 so this will be 16 pixel so the default step is 4 so if you write 4 you can multiply it by 4 into 4 16 so if you write 6 this will be 4 into 6 that is 24 so default is 4 unit so it increments by 4 unit so if you write 8 it will be 32 then i'm going to give it a shadow lg so if you have any doubt for a class you can go to the documentation here and in here you can write like shadow so you can see different classes that you can use for the shadow so we are using this shadow lg which has this box shadow x for the x value it is 0 for the y it is 10 for the blur it is 15 and uh, for the spread it is minus 3 and for the color it is this black very 10 percent black color so this way you can easily search for any classes so when you build many projects you will tend to remember most of the classes but initially you have to refer to the documentation after applying the shadow i'm going to make it sticky and I'll make the top to zero so these are the classes that we apply in the nav tag now let's work on the containers div so i'll write class in here i'm going to give it a class called container and to center it like we write margin top and bottom zero and right and left auto here you can write margin x auto so margin left and right will be auto so it will be centered and then i'm going to add flex to it so that all the contents are arranged horizontally now i'll use the justify content space between so for that you write justify between so now the contents are equally spaced then for the vertical alignment if you write a line item center you write items center here so this will get vertically aligned so this is for the container next we'll work on the logo let's give this class i'm going to make it white so now it is white i'm going to change the size of the font so you can write text lg here if you search we have these classes xs is 12 pixel lg is 18 pixel so i'm using 18 pixel for the font and i'm going to make the font bold so I'll write font bold let me do one thing I'm going to remove this text LG I'm going to give a class to this anchor tag itself so now in the anchor tag I'll give it a class let's say text 3xl so font size will be 30 pixel and now I'm going to add a little margin to the right of this uh, home icon so here what I can do is I can write margin right and I'll add a 8 pixel margin so for 8 I can write 2 4 into 2 8 so we have this margin so this is the logo now let's work on the links so for the links first I'm going to style it so in the anchor tag write class I'll give it a gray color 300 and I'm going to add a hover effect to it so for now let me remove this and I'll show you how to do it first I'm going to add this class so to add multiple cursor press command and click you'll get multiple cursor and then paste it so we have the links now let me work on this hamburger icon I'm going to give it a class that gray color and when you hover so this is the way you write states so when you hover i want the text to be white so when i hover over it you see the text changes so in the desktop version i don't need this so what i'm going to do is i'm going to apply a class called hidden so this will get hidden in the desktop version sorry i need to hide this entire div i need to hide this entire div so I give it a class so now it is hidden but the thing is when we reach to a mobile size I want this to be shown so the way we can do is we can write media queries like 
for the medium devices and up it will remain hidden but when we reach the size of a mobile version it is shown so in tailwind css first we write media queries for the mobile version so it is mobile first approach and then we'll and then we move on to the large screen devices so what does this mean is for the medium devices and up it should be hidden and for the mobile device it will be shown so this is the logic of it likewise when a page when we view a page on the mobile version we don't want this menu links so here i'm going to give it a class and add different classes first i'm going to hide this so this will be hidden so initially it will be hidden and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to show this on larger devices so i can write md flex so on larger devices it is shown now let me add some spacing here for the spacing you can directly write gap let's say 3 to 4 into 12 pixel or you can use space x 8 so this will be 32 pixel so using these two way you can add spacing to it so our menu is responsive now in the desktop version menus are shown and in the mobile version this hamburger icon is shown now let me work on the hover effect so for the hover effect we are going to add our custom classes so for the class i am going to name it hover underline this is not a tailwind class this class i am going to write so the way we write custom classes is inside this input.css file so in here i will write hover underline and here i will use the at apply directive and here i will write the different css rules to make the underline work so i will write relative and then i am going to write inline flex and then items center after this i'm going to create the pseudo element so hover underline after position will be absolute left will be zero bottom will be zero i'll display this to block height will be let's say 0.5 2 pixel background color will be same as that of the link so i can write background current i'll set a transition all and the duration of the transition will be 300 millisecond content will be nothing and width will be zero let me add a timing function ease in out now initially the width will be 0 and when you hover so I'll write hover the after element width will be 100% so let me try so here I have applied the class to the wrong element cut this we need to add the hover effect on the links so enable multiple cursor and paste it here now if i hover you will see the hover effect now i am going to work on the mobile version so when i click on this link i want to show the menu for that we need to create a mobile version menu links so right after this button i am going to create a div with an id mobile menu now inside this i'll have the same links so just copy this paste it here so we have the link i'm going to add a class of block to each of the links and then i'm going to remove this over underline effect and here i'll write over text white so when I hover we have this text white and then I'm going to give it a padding of 8 pixel. Now let's add the class to the container div. So here what I want I want this to be hidden on large screen devices so I'll write 
on medium size devices and up it will remain hidden so if you can see this is hidden and i'll give it a margin top of uh, 32 pixel so we have this margin now initially when you switch to mobile version this will get hidden and when you click on this hamburger icon this will reveal itself so again i'll write hidden and i'm going to change this class using javascript so when you click this will be shown so this is the markup that we need to add for the mobile version now i'm going to add the javascript code to make the functionality so in the public folder create a file called app.js and i'm going to add this to index.html just before the closing body tag i'll write script source app.js now in the app.js file i'm going to select this button with id menu button so i can do const menu button equal document dot get element by id in this menu button and then i'm going to select this mobile menu so i'll write const mobile menu document dot get element by id this mobile menu so when i click on the button i want to add a class i want to toggle the class hidden on the mobile menu so i can write menu button dot add event listener so when i click here i'm going to run a function inside the function i'm going to toggle the class on the mobile menu so mobile menu dot class list dot toggle and what is the class that hidden class so let's see so we have the toggle function now i want to add one more functionality so if i click on this home i want to remove this entire menu so for that i'm going to select all the links the menu links so menu links equal this mobile menu because the link is inside this mobile menu i want to select all the anchor tags then i'll use query selector all and i'll select the anchor tags within that mobile menu and now i'm going to run a for each loop so menu links dot for each for each link inside the menu links i'm going to add a event listener the event listener will be click and then i use arrow function and i'm going to add a class hidden so mobile menu dot class is dot add hidden so if i check so when i click on any links the menu is hidden so we have created the navigation section so next we are going to work on the hero section so after this nav tag i'm going to create a section this will be the main wrapping container for a hero section inside this i'll have a div in which i'll add the content so for the content i have an h1 let's copy this content from the main page and paste it here you can write anything you like then we have a paragraph let's copy the paragraph and then we have two buttons so i'm going to create two button i'll write shop now and i'm going to duplicate this so you can press shift option and down arrow to duplicate it and in here i'll write explore so this is the markup for the hero section now let's add tailwind classes to it so first i'm going to make the height of this section 200 vh so in tailwind for height 100 vh we write h screen so this will give you a height of 100 vh see then i'm going to display this as flex and i'm going to arrange the item horizontally as well as vertically and place it at the center
so write item center and justify content center for which we write justify center so we have a content in the middle of the page then i'm going to add the background image for adding the background image i'm going to use inline style so i'll write style and in here i'll write background image and then i will use url i've added a folder inside this public directory called images which has all the images for the project so in the url i'll write img inside the image and inside this i'm going to use background.jpg next i'm going to add the background cover property and background center property and background no repeat property to this image so i'll use tailwind classes so background cover background will be center and background no repeat so this is the image and to make it fixed we need to add a class bg fixed so when i scroll the page the image will be fixed after this this image is too bright i'm going to add a linear gradient so here i'll write linear gradient and i'll say rgba it will be black and this will be 20% black so 0.2 so i've done a mistake here rgba so we have the background image now i'm going to work on the div so in here i'm going to write class so the first thing that i want to do is to make the width of this div to be 50% when the user view the page on a device larger than mobile screen so for that i can write md width will be so we have a div of width 50% on a device larger than the desktop version next i am going to add text center and also i am going to give it text white so it is legible and then i am going to set a padding all around of 32 pixels so i can write p8 so these are the classes that i need to add to this div now let's work on the h1 so for the h1 let's add a class here for the mobile version the text size will be 4xl and for the desktop version the text size will be 6xl and then i'm going to make it bold so i can write font bold and after this i'm going to add a margin bottom of 16 pixel so this is how it look like on the desktop version and this is how it looks like on the mobile version so the font size is reduced to 4 xl next let's add classes to the paragraph so for the paragraph for the desktop version i'll give it a text size of xl and for the mobile version the text will be lg and margin bottom will be 6 now let's style the button so for the button what i'm going to do i'm going to create custom styles so to create custom styles go to input.css file in here i'll declare btn class and i'll use apply directive the fonts the background color for the button will be yellow 500 for the hover effect the yellow font I'm going to change this to 400. Transition. I want a transition, nice transition between the state change. The duration will be 300. Text will be black. I'm going to change this font to bold. And I set a padding on the y-axis to 8 pixel. So four into two and padding on the horizontal axis will be twenty-four. Sorry, uh, will be six. So this equates to twenty-four. So now we have created the custom class. So now what I'm going to do is just copy this 
and paste it here so we have our button for the first button I'm going to give a margin right of 16 pixel so this is the hero section it is completely responsive now we are going to work on the about me section so the about me section is divided into two parts in the left part we have this image and in the right part we have this content so after this i'm going to create a comment about a section i'm going to create a section with the class let me add class later first i'm going to write the markup now inside this section i'll create a wrapper div now this div will hold two more divs one for the image and one for the content so let me add the image this about.jpg about me sorry about us and in the content part I'm going to add a span inside this span I'm going to create this uh, briefcase icon so I BX BX briefcase all this is the code for the icon so let's see so we have the icon at the bottom then here I'm going to write what we do after the span I have an h2 about us then I have two paragraphs so I'm just going to copy this paragraph So these are the two paragraphs then we have this icons so for the icon I'm going to create a div and here I'm going to just copy and paste the code for the icons so these are the icons now let's write the classes so in the section tag I'm going to add the classes first so I'm going to give it a container this container so these have some rules applied to it and it will adjust itself uh, depending upon the uh, de device width then I'm going to center the container so MX auto there is also another way to center this so in the so in the tailwind.config.js file under this theme object I can write container center to true so this will also center the container for this small project I'm going to remove this you can also add custom colors to this so under this extend object you can define your colors so let me just show you so you can write colors in here let me add a color color primary let's say this color to green So now I can use this green color in my project if I change the section color to BG color primary see we have access to that color so the color gets applied here I'm going to remove this I'm just showing you you can add your own custom colors but this is a very simple project that's why I don't bother to do it so let it be here now here I'm going to give a margin top of 24 so these are the classes for the section now let's add classes to this wrapper div so I'll write class so the first class that I'm going to add is flex so when you add flex the content will horizontally align itself so this is the default property all the content are aligned in a row but for the mobile version I want this content to align in a column so I'll write flex call but for the desktop version and up I'm going to change this to flex row so this is the logic for the desktop version and up the flex direction will be row and for the default flex direction will be column 
now i'm going to add item center align item center let me change this to desktop let me hide i'm going to give a gap of 32 pixel so gap 8 so we'll have this gap of 32 pixel then i'm going to add all around padding of 16 pixel so p4 and for the mobile device let me show you for the mobile device this padding is applied all round padding but for the desktop version i don't need this padding so i can do md p0 so this padding is removed on the desktop version now these are the classes for the container dev now let's work on this image before that i'm going to give classes to this dev also here i'm going to set a width to one by two 50 percent then i'm going to set a margin bottom four and uh, margin and for the desktop version margin bottom will be zero i'll set a border border dashed and the color of the border will be black and i'm going to give it a padding two that is eight pixel so now we are going to work on this div so i'll give a class first i'm going to set the width width will be one by two and for the desktop version i'm going to set a margin left of four then let's work on this span text will be slate 700 the text color I'll display this to block and margin bottom will be 4 and then I'm going to add classes to this I MR2 margin right will be 2 so that we have some space here then I'm going to add classes to the H2 so I'll write class text size will be 4 Excel font bold and margin bottom will be 16 pixel after this let's add classes to the paragraph so text will be gray 700 margin bottom 4 and line height which is leading will be 32 so I'm going to copy this class and add this to this paragraph also so we have the about section if you see so next we are going to work on this product section so after this about me section i'm going to create a comment products in here first i'm going to create a section inside this i'm going to create a wrapper div which will contains all the card now i'm going to create a div for the card one the first card each card will be enclosed within a div so the card has an image after the image we have the content which i'm going to enclose within another div the heading is h2 and then we have the paragraph i'm going to just copy the text from here paste it here after the paragraph we have this pricing section for this strikeout text i'm going to use the del tag and in here i'll write dollar 2000 and then i'm going to use after this tag i'm going to use a span tag and here i'll write 1500 so this is the markup for one card so let's see how it look like so this is how it look like right now we are going to style it like this so first let's add the image so images with an image i'm going to use f1 these these are images so we have this image now let's start to add classes to this so i'll begin with the section i'll give it a class first i'm going to give it a class called container i'll center it by using mx auto margin left and right auto i'll give it a padding 
on the y axis of 48 pixel and I'll set a margin top of 64 pixel. So we have the padding and the margin top of 16, uh, 64 pixel. Then I'm going to work on this div. This will be the wrapper div for the entire cards. So here I'm going to give it a class of grid and I'm going to create three column grid for the desktop version and up. I'll write MD grid calls three. This will create three column div. I'll set a padding four and for desktop devices the padding will be zero and I'm going to set a gap of uh, 32 pixel. Now let's work on the image. So I'll give it a class. First I'm going to create a shadow. I'm going to round the corners. So I'll write rounded LG. So 8 pixel rounded and I'll set overflow hidden. Then I'm going to work on this image. So I'll give it a class. I'll set the width to full to make it responsive and height to this 80 and I'll set object to cover and I'm going to add a hover effect so I'll write hover I'm going to scale it so I can write scale and within square bracket I can write the value so I, I want to scale it 1.05 so you can see the scaling is abrupt so I need to add a transition so I'll write uh, transition and the timing function will be ease in out and the duration will be let's say 300 now if I hover over this we get this nice effect now let's work on the text so I'll give it a padding of 6 so 24 pixel padding I'm going to give now for the h2 I'm going to give it a class text excel 20 pixel font bold and margin bottom 8 pixel then I'm going to add classes to the paragraph text will be cray 700 and margin bottom 32 pixel sorry 16 pixel now let's add classes to this del so class I'll give it a margin right of 8 pixel text will be small and color of the text will be this slate color 400 and for the span I'll give it a class of text excel so this is the card now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy and paste this card five more times. So this is the entire div. I'm going to copy this one, two, three, four, five. And now I'm going to change the content. So let me just change the image. You can change the content yourself. So for the first, second one, I'm going to do this two here three I'm just changing the images four five six so these are the six cards they are completely responsive so this is the desktop version and in the mobile version all the cards are stacked vertically So this is the product section. Next, we are going to work on this newsletter section. So after this product section, I'm going to create a comment of newsletter. I'm going to create a section tag. Inside this, I'll have a div. Again, I'm going to create a div, which will be a wrapper. And now this has two parts. This, uh, this left and this right part so I'll create two divs now in the first div we have two image so I'll write two image tag first images 
let's say f2 second image is let's say f4 and in this div we have the form element so here i'm going to create one more div now here we have a h2 tag and then we have a form tag i'm going to remove the action inside the form i'm going to create the text field so input this will be email name let's say email and id i'm going to give email and i'm going to write a placeholder so your email address and then i'm going to create a button so button subscribe so this is the markup for the newsletter section now let's add the classes in the section i'm going to give it a class of margin top of 14 now this div will have a class of bg zinc of 800 background will be 800 padding y will be 8 now i'm going to set the container so i'll give it a class you can <clears throat> you can write container or you can write max w 7xl this will be equal to 1280 pixel and i'll center this using mx auto i'll give it flex and i'm going to change the flex direction flex column reverse when you see this page on mobile device and when you see this page on desktop device flex will be row now this div i'm going to work on so class i'll make it 50 percent so md width will be one by two margin bottom eight and uh, on the desktop devices i'm going to remove the margin and i'll display this to flex and gap of two between the two images i'm going to set a gap let me see here, here i have to write jpg so we have the two image they are within this container with flex property on it so these will be aligned in a horizontal manner and the gap, and the gap will be 8 pixel now let's work on the image so i'll give it a class of height 52 which will be 208 pixel width will be 52 an object will be cover and I'm going to give it a shadow, a little bit shadow LG. Now I just copy this entire class and paste it inside this image also. So we have the images. Now let's work on the content. So here I'll give it a class one by two. And then I'm going to give classes to this div. So I'll have a padding of 8 32 pixel now let's work on the h2 text will be 2xl font will be bold text will be white and margin bottom will be 32 pixel 16 pixel now let's work on the form i'm going to give it a class of relative then let's add classes to this width will be full padding x4 padding y2 and i'll give it relative because i want to place the button here that's why i'm giving it relative now let's work on the button so i'll give it a class of absolute right will be zero top will be zero then our custom class btn so we have the button here so this is the newsletter section if i shrink down the page it looks like this the images the the form element comes first and then the images but on the desktop version we have the image first and then the form element this we have achieved using this flex row reverse property here so next we are going to work on the testimony section so after the newsletter section let's uh, work on the testimony 
I'll create a section tag. So this will be the wrapper for the entire testimony section. Then I'm going to have h2 tag testimony. And now I'm going to create a div which will act as a wrapper for the for all the cards. Then I'm going to create each card. So each card will sit within this div. So here first I have the image this test one then I have a paragraph let's copy the content from here and I'm going to paste this here after the paragraph we have the name John Doe so this is the markup for the testimony card now let's add classes to it and then I'm just going to copy paste this three times so for the section I'm going to give it a class first called container mx auto to center it and a margin top of 80 pixel so 4 into 20 80 pixel then let's work on this testimony h2 give it a class text 3xl font semi bold margin bottom 32 pixel and text to center so let's see now let's work on this container div give it a class grid for the mobile device the grid will be 1 so I'll write grid call 1 and for the desktop devices the grid will be 3 so I can write grid calls 3 and I'll set a gap of 32 pixels so gap 8 now let's style the testimony card give it a class background white I'm going to set a padding 6 let's make it rounded and let's add a shadow then I'm going to set the container to flex align it vertically and then I'll set this to flex column so we have the content vertically now let's work on this image so I'll give it a class height will be 80 pixel width will be 80 pixel I'll make it rounded full so the border radius will be 100 percent then I'm going to give it a margin bottom of 32 pixel and set object to cover now let's work on the paragraph text gray 700 margin bottom 4 that is 32 pixel sorry 16 pixel and text to center and then this paragraph text gray 600 and font will be semi bold so this is a marker by the styling for one card now just what I'm going to do is to copy and paste this two more times. So this is the markup for one card. I'm just going to copy this, paste it two more times and I'm going to change the images. So we have the three testimonies. Next we are going to work on the footer. So a footer has four columns inside a container so let's create the footer after the testimony section I'm going to use the footer tag now inside this first I'll have a container div now inside this div we'll have four column div one two three and four this is the layout now let's add content so inside this div we have the logo so what I'm going to do is to copy this and paste it here inside this div so we'll have the logo 
see we have the logo but it's white that's why it's not visible next so let me write one thing call one this will be call two now in this div i have h4 with text links after that i'm going to have a ul inside this li and then inside the li i'll have the anchor tag in here i'll write home now i'm going to duplicate this four more times so this will be product sorry about products testimony and this will be contact let me remove this contact i'll add it in a different section now let's go to column 3 in here i'll have a h4 contact and then a ul let's copy this paste it here change the text to faq blog and let's say contact and for the fourth column I'll have h4 let's write socials in here I'm going to create a ul inside this li and I'll write the phone number here then another li and here I'll write at mail.com then after this I'm going to just paste the social icons so we have the social icon in the about section so I can just copy and paste that I'm going to just copy this and paste it after the ending ul tag so we have the content for the footer now let's add classes to it so first i'm going to work on this footer tag so the class will be zinc background color text will be white and padding y 12 and margin top 20 then let's work on this container div so class container I'll give it flex flex column and in MD mobile devices and up flex will be row so in the mobile device it will be column and on the desktop devices it will be row and I'll write justify between so the space is equally given to every elements now let's work on the column 1 I'll give it a class margin bottom 8 when you see the page on mobile devices we'll have the margin this margin 8 then I'm going to work on this column 2 let's skip the div margin bottom 32 pixel then for the h4 text will be lg font will be semi bold and margin bottom 4 so we have the margin here uh, next I'm going to add classes to this a anchor tag so this will be block and I'm going to just add a hover effect so text gray 400 and margin bottom 2 so we have this hover effect now I'm just going to copy this and paste it in all the a tags now let's work on the column 3 so class margin bottom 8 for the h4 just i'm going to copy this and paste it here and again i'm going to copy the class for the a 
and paste it in this section now for the column 4 class will be margin 8 and for the h4 just copy the classes from here paste it here and for the anchor tags I'm going to copy this class and paste it here so we have a footer this is the footer for the desktop version and when you shrink down the page the footer is like this so we have created the entire website using tailwind or css i hope you like this video and if you do please subscribe to my channel and i will see you later